Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he describes in the Quran in many places that the believers are those who have, besides taqwa in iman, they have this one special quality that's called tawakkul. Tawakkul is something that's inside the hearts of the people. And the scholars, they said tawakkul, there's two aspects to it. One is the external dealings of the person, the other is what's going on inside his heart. And you can have somebody that's working really hard, stressed out, they're going to work and they're working day and night, but inside they could have tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you could have somebody who's laying down on the beach, getting tickled by feathers and has this juice next to him with umbrellas on it and everything, but inside they could be in a state of complete, complete, you know, not trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They could be in complete, you know, misery. And so tawakkul, the scholars have said there's two aspects to it. What's going on inside and what's going on outside. As far as what's going on outside, the Prophet ﷺ was asked, Ya Rasulullah, somebody came into the masjid, he said, should I tie my camel and trust Allah, or should I just leave it and trust Allah? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tie your camel and trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is something you have to do when you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, the mother of Isa alayhi salam, she was pregnant and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells her, go to a place that's far east. So she goes hiding, concealing the pregnancy to a place far east and she delivers the child. And the pains of labor overtake her. And she's in such a state of weakness. She's in such a state of pain. This amazing human being, the Prophet ﷺ described her as one of the four most, you know, honorable women of the face of the earth that ever walked on the earth. This, this awesome human being, when the pains of labor over, overtake her, she starts saying things like, I wish I never existed. I wish I was dead and I was forgotten. And this is pain talking through her. And what happens after the child is delivered? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comforts her. Says, oh Maryam, there's a stream running right in front of you. Drink from it. And Allah tells her, and you see that there's a palm tree that you're leaning on? Shake the palm tree. Ripe, fresh, ripe dates will fall on you. Anybody who has seen a palm tree in their life, they know that 10 men can't shake a palm tree. And here is a pregnant woman who was just weakened by the pains of labor, who just delivered the child. Allah is telling her, shake the palm tree, fresh ripe dates will fall on you. How come Allah didn't just bring the dates down for her? Because even in every situation, you place your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is going to provide for you, Allah is going to take care of you, but still you have to do your part. Even if it means, you know, and of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the dates fall down, she just had to push the palm tree. And so, even if it's a small effort that's required from you, you have to do that. That's part of tawakkul. And the other aspect is what's happening inside. Have you ever been in a car with a person who's a new driver, and you're sitting next to them teaching them how to drive, and you don't really trust the way they drive? You know, you fear for your life, so as they're driving, you're yelling at them, hey, stop here, to the red light, can't you see that? Don't do... And you're just screaming at them, and your body's all tense, and you don't know what to do, and you almost want to take control of the driving, even though you're not driving. This is the opposite of tawakkul. There's tension, there's fear, this is all from the opposite of tawakkul. And you see fear in the people that don't have tawakkul, have many degrees of fear. Smallest degree is worry. People that don't have tawakkul, they're always thinking about, man, how's this going to work out? Is this going to be okay for me? Is this going to work out for me? I'm trying to do this. What if that doesn't come? What if this doesn't happen? How, how am I going to pay my bills? What's going to happen with my kids? And what is this guy going to get better? Is this person going to get well? And they have all these worries circling around in their minds. And the scholars have said, worry is a spiritual sickness. It's a sign that there is not enough tawakkul. And this is just the smallest level of fear. Then there is higher levels of fear. You know, when the battlefield, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, when you meet the enemy, if you turn your back, that's a sin Allah will not forgive. You know why? Because that's a moment you have to defend the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to stand up for, for what you believe. But uh, there are people whose hearts fail them. They feel dread, they feel terror, and they turn around and start running. And in that case, you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they don't trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa alayhi salam came, brought his people to the gates of Jerusalem. He said, go in there and fight and take the city. Allah has promised you it. All you have to do is walk through the gates. They said, oh Musa, we're scared of these people inside. Why don't you go fight with Allah? We're going to sit here. Right? So they don't trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promise. And what happened? A couple of people, believers among them, came up and said, don't you know how many times Allah gave victory 
small group of people over a great group of people. Right? So there are degrees of fear, and every time there is fear present, it's overcome by having tawakkul. And if the fear overcomes you, then that means there is no tawakkul. If the worries overcome you, then that means there is no tawakkul. And so tawakkul, you know, it's to recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is in charge. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches the Prophet sallallahu in Surah Tawbah. When you فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَشْرَةِ The Prophet is working day and night. Every single day he's going out calling people to Islam. And he's, you know, he's so upset by it, he's trying his best. What happens? People turn their backs to him, sallallahu alayhi wa The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is hurt by this and Allah says, Oh Prophet, if they turn away from you, say, say these words. Hasbi Allah, Allah is enough for me. La ilaha illahu, there is no God except Allah. He is the one worthy of my devotion. Alayhi tawakkal. And I, I lean on Him, I trust Him, I, play, I depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa huwa rabbul He is the master of the great throne. What does it mean He is the master of the throne? That means He is the one in charge of everything that happens. Not you, not me, not our grandparents, nobody else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so a person who has tawakkul, they do their efforts. They do everything they can, but they leave the results to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They leave the results to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever Allah wills, that's going to happen. And so you do your part, but you leave what's going to happen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what happens sometimes, Allah tests you and tests me. Right? You put so much effort in something, but the, the fruits you get from this labor, it's very small. It's almost heartbreaking. Right? Nuh alayhi salam came to his people, giving da'wah 950 years. Day and night, publicly, secretly, you know, in the in the streets, in the privacy of their privacy of their homes, every single moment after 950 years, about 80 believers, and even his own son didn't believe in him. And then Nuh alayhi salam was looking at all of these things. He knows, you know, if, if it was you and me, we'd, we'd try one day, two days, three days, and then we'd give up. And it's, nothing's happening. I work so hard, but it doesn't matter. Right? But Nuh alayhi salam, he has tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows that behind all of this, the results are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what happened as a result? All the disbelievers were destroyed, and the entire population left alive were the believers that were with Nuh alayhi salam. You, me, all of the human race are descendants of these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَغْرَقْنَا we, 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 وَأَغْرَقْنَا الْآخَرِينَ We drowned all of them, and then Allah said, سَلَامُ عَلَى نُوحَ عَلَى سَلَامُ سَلَامٌ عَلَى نُوحٍ فِي الْعَالَمِينَ Everybody in the world sends salams to Nuh alayhi salam. Look at the result. Right? This is how we reward the people of Ihsan. And so, I know life is stressful. You're going through a lot of things. Trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Trust Allah. You know what happens? He says in the Quran, If you just protect yourself, have taqwa of Allah, fear Allah, Allah will find a way out from you for you from the worst situations. And he gives you risk from places you never even thought about. And whoever trusts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, Allah is enough for you. And so we conclude with this. And so the Prophet ﷺ, in teaching this subject, the scholars they, they look into his sirah and they said every time you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because you know we want something to happen, we want ease in our life, we want you know the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every time you're asking for something, the scholars they said if you don't follow your dua with action, you're not sincere in your dua. You know, it's like a person sitting under the tree and he's saying, the apple's going to fall into my mouth and then I'll eat it. You know, I trust Allah, the apple will fall. But no, every time you make a dua, you ask Allah for something, go and do something to realize this dua, to manifest this dua. One time, you know, one of the Sahaba used to serve the Prophet ﷺ. And he used to be a young guy, 
always standing at the door of the Prophet Sallallahu always, you know, in, ready to serve. And the Prophet Sallallahu would ask him to do certain things. And after some time, the Prophet Sallallahu came up to him, put his hands on his shoulder and said, Young man, ask what you want. What is it that you like? He said, I don't want anything, Ya Rasulullah, I'm okay, I'm okay. The Prophet ﷺ would ask him the other day, what would you like, in, you know, anything you want, ask me, and I'll, I'll, I'll make dua for you. And the guy said, yeah, it's okay, Ya Rasulullah, I'm okay. And finally, when the Prophet ﷺ kept insisting, he realized, wait a second, this is a really big opportunity. Like you have the Prophet of Allah ﷺ making dua for you, asking Allah to give you something, right? And the Prophet's dua are always accepted, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, okay, uh, can I have some time to think about what I want? He said, yeah, take your time. So he went, and he started thinking about what he wants. And he started reflecting, and he's thinking, and he said, should I ask for money? Should I ask for wealth? And he started thinking about what's going to happen if I ask for this, to the end. And some of us, we see like one day into the future. Some of us see two days into the future. Some of us can't even see anything into the future. We just see what's happening right now and we say, my life sucks, right? But this man, subhanAllah, he was thinking so far into the future. He said, I'm going to have money, I'm going to have this, and I'm going to live a wealthy life, and then what's going to happen? I'll probably die, and then I'll leave all of this wealth behind, and then it will be inherited by other people. And then he said, maybe I should ask for land, so I can have independence and everything. He said, if I have land and this and that, and it's just kept thinking through it, everything he thought about that was related to dunya, at the end of it, death would come and destroy it. So he said, man, there's nothing I can ask for that's in dunya that's going to last me, so I'm going to ask him for something. He came up to the Prophet He said, Ya Rasulullah, I have made up my mind. The Prophet said, ask, what would, what would you like? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to be your neighbor in Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ is taken aback by this young guy. I mean, he's, he's like a teenager or something. And for him to have like this kind of desire, I mean, teenagers, what do they want? I want a car, I want this, I want a house, I want, you know, all, all kinds of stuff. But this man, teenager, his thinking is so deep, he goes, Ya Rasulullah, I want to be your neighbor in Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ is so taken aback, he goes, who advised you to say this? He says, nobody, Ya Rasulullah, I just thought about this and I thought about that. And he told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam his thought process and everything. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he smiled and he put his hand on the guy's shoulder and he said, then help me with your request. Help me with your request. Make a lot of sajda. He said, help me with your request, make a lot of sajda. Now look at this. Here is the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam making dua for to Allah, the one who is the most beloved He's making dua to Allah. Ya Allah, make this man my neighbor in Jannah. He knows his dua is accepted. But still he says, help me with your dua. Increase your duration in sajda. Make long sajdas. SubhanAllah. Right? Few things we can take from this. When you make dua, follow it up with some action and see what Allah will do for you. See what Allah will do for you. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single person that has come. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, shower your mercy upon every single person that's here, Ya Allah. Whatever desires, whatever goals we have, Ya Allah, that is good for us, Ya Allah, grant it to us, Ya Allah. Remove from our path all the obstacles, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, anyone going through difficulties, Ya Allah, grant us ease, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, anyone going through difficulties in their iman, Ya Allah, we ask you to increase our iman, Ya Allah. Say Ameen. We ask you to increase our iman, Ya Allah, and make us steadfast in our prayers, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, you are the master of the universe the creator of every atom in the universe. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, we ask you to, to keep the shayateen and the evil temptations far away from us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, anyone going through difficulties in their families, Ya Allah, due to turmoil and difficulties and whatever it may be, Ya Allah, unite our hearts, Ya Allah. Place between us love and mercy, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, and make our homes places of peace and tranquility, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, and, and fix our broken families, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, we ask you, Ya Allah, grant, grant us the courage to forgive each other, Ya Allah, and place our trust in you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, anyone going through difficulties in their health, Ya Allah, suffering in their families, anybody, their loved ones going through health problems, Ya Allah, we ask you to grant them complete shifa, Ya Allah. We ask you, Ya Allah, grant them such a shifa that there is no there is no illness after it, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, all the people that are oppressing others in the face of the world today, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, we ask you to, to protect and, and to preserve the oppressed, Ya Allah, and to elevate them, Ya Allah, and, and raise them up out of the state of oppression, Ya Allah. And all the oppressors, Ya Allah, guide them, Ya 
Allah, or destroy them, Ya Allah, whatever is your will, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, we ask you, you Allah, accept our du'as, Ya Allah. Accept our du'as and grant all of us Jannah, Ya Allah. And protect us from Al-Fayr. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, wa alayhi wa sallam, 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 wa alay